Well, Thelma, we want to talk about Church Women United, and I'm going to read our mission statement, and then I'm going to ask you to comment on it, because you are the icon of what Church Women United is all about. For, but for people who don't know anything about it, um, let's just read our mission statement. Church Women United is a racially, culturally, theologically inclusive Christian women's movement celebrating unity and diversity and working for a world of peace and justice. Now, it's nice to have all those words, but we're just going to talk about what they mean, what they mean in the 21st century, but maybe what they meant at the beginning. So would you just share some of your stories? I always go back to the fact that Church of Women United represented a small nucleus of women coming together to organize for peace at a time when the world was being geared up for perhaps the most uh, devastating war in our history. Uh, at a time when uh, women of the world uh, were not too widely engaged in basic life-giving issues, and certainly uh, this was an opportunity to bring together so many of the races, um, uh, so many of the concerns around race that so seldom were being uh, faced or discussed. Uh, the segregated um, sleeping and eating facilities for a traveler is almost heartbreaking to think of the uh, children walking miles to school when other children sped by in school buses. Um, uh, teenagers who would like to go in for a Coke uh, at, as they piled out of uh, long, dreary school days and are uh, forced to separate from their friend because one has black hair and the other blonde. And this was not the world we needed to to um, uh, work for. Uh, and it seemed almost cataclysmic mm -hmm. that the uh, bomb in our Pearl Harbor would occur at a time when a small group of women, of all places, Atlantic City, mm -hmm. but it's a good place to take a gamble on. Right. <laughs> so, this, uh, to me, uh, is, is a sensitive to the point. I've mentioned the world uh, races, divisions, but we were equally aware of cultural divisions that kept us out of it from uh, various ho homes mm -hmm. and uh, it did not let us have that flow of that, that we were accruing as nations in terms of new inventions, in terms of different ways of providing medical care or medical services. And it, sometimes you have to stop and say, this is enough. And I think that's what the small group of women that had been working for months and years around this issue could come together and make a bigger ball of clay to say, we can do something about it. So racially, culturally, and... Uh, theologically. Theologically. I was going to say yeah. ecumenical, but that wasn't such a good word. <laughs> <laughs> this is, sounds better. Theologically. Yes, that there are prayers that we can pray together. Yes, even mm -hmm. if we simply stand and bow our heads in recognition of a higher power. Thelma, why don't you tell us a little bit about your experiences with the Fellowship of the Least Coin? And I know you met Shanti Solomon, and just what did it mean to you personally? Out of a response to participate in a movement for peace came a friendship that uh, uh, has changed every day of my life. And I think we must remember that uh, World Day of Prayer, uh, the need for that came in the early 50s. Uh, when the Middle East and the Far East were uh, facing constant um, challenges, fiscal, economic, uh, military, uh, and when there was an opportunity to go into uh, uh, one of the countries 
uh, of the of Middle East with the prayer group, uh, Mount Rashanan, uh, a woman of India, thought that she was going to be a part of this task force and work group. And when she got to the borders, she was told that uh, she, despite the fact that she had documentation, that she could not come with this group. Uh, Heartbreaking. The group, I think, asked that they disband and not go back. And she said, "No, I'll go back to the Philippines and wait for you in prayer." And out of that period of denial uh, came this her response to it: that women in every country of the world um, could respond with common prayer on the defined date that they could collect coins uh, throughout the interim period. And every woman it could only verify their prayer statement with the giving of the least coin. The emphasis was not on the dollar, but on the commitment. And so uh, uh, from the circles of prayer, in countries around the world. The uh, World Day of Prayer, I think it's still the first First Friday in first March. First Friday right. in March. Uh, come together and we bring our least coin. And people often say, oh, I've, I'd like to give a dollar I can afford. No, it's not that. It's so that we all are the same. Uh, no one has any priorical um, status because of financial uh, or fiscal uh, uh, gain or wealth. And this has brought the women across the world together. But even more, uh, we feel change does come with our prayer. But even more, the least coins once collected have been used to empower women economically. Mm -hmm. uh, grants are given a year. Um, it may be what is in American dollars, ten, fifteen dollars. It's needed to buy a cell phone so that remote areas, people can call for distress, or to buy a few yards of cloth that you create items and and can sell and become independent. And it's one of the uh, simple acts of love uh, that. Um, has inspired uh, women now, or I suppose, from 1950s to 2015. That's a lot of years and a lot of giving. Uh, Shanti used to come to New York and uh, small, uh, quiet, uh, almost uh, recessive, as I would call it. But you know, around the table at night, and I had the privilege of having her in my home, she was a spry. <laughs> they all will be going shopping tomorrow. I've got to get the sisters in my home. <laughs> they want socks, white socks. And to see this other part of a, a small, dynamic woman that can live fully. And she wanted to be able to live fully so that there's not a world at war. And that can only come mm -hmm. when we have peace. And, and so that it's everybody's victory. We all give the same at the same level. Mm -hmm. I, I I just love to tell that story. It's a wonderful story. Um, and and you know the Fellowship of the Least Coin celebrates the 60th anniversary in 2016 in Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, so yeah. Church Women United is going to plan to have the Common Council meeting just before it, so that our women can be part of that celebration. And we now in. In the United States, we collect the coins on May Friendship Day, um, but they're mm -hmm. given, you know, all all over the world. And we had, we received a grant from Fellowship of the Least Coins so that we could have six young women attend the Commission on the Status of Women at the United Nations. So that's the type of thing that oh, that they can do. But it's also things like uh, building, helping build a school, building a well somewhere, uh, and hearing what those coins are used for is is inspiring. But I can't believe that you actually met Shanti, had her at your house. I mean, that's, I want to touch you.
uh, Church of United tried not to forget uh, the challenges of, to the world created by the bombing of Hiroshima. Uh, many years later, uh, Church of United uh, developed a causeway. Uh, this was a visitation to other nations by uh, women from America. And on World Day of Prayer, we went to the Peace Park, uh, the Peace Park to celebrate, uh, not to celebrate, but to remember uh, what devastation uh, happened at that moment. Uh, we were standing on the stoop of a church, a small church, uh, just in the center of the town. And as the women said, it was, uh, you cannot conceive of what it is to see hundreds of people, a over a thousand, blinded by the flash from the bomb's explosion. Or for days after the bombing occurred, human beings crawling the street with uh, bags of flesh hanging from their bodies, deteriorating. How could this civilized country uh, be instantly uh, the scene of perhaps the worst pain that we'd ever could imagine? Uh, I think it was with joy that uh, the world began to look toward other sharing. And let's, I'm always pleased that Church Women United did this at the level of hands, reading to hand, crossing hands together. Because um, as you stand in the Peace Park and with the, uh, the monument to children, it's a, uh, a young girl, face tilted up with hands stretched and toward the sky, and every uh, inch of this small uh, uh, obelisk uh, was covered with with folded swans. I'm not sure we call them swans. Cranes. Peace cranes. Peace, peace, peace cranes. Peace cranes. There's a skip my mind. Mm -hmm. And I uh, think these were cranes that the children of Hiroshima had folded because it is an Asian uh, proverb that says if you fold a thousand cranes, you can expect a reconciliation and peace. Mm -hmm. the, the um, cranes had been folded, and now the children could wait for peace to come. And, and it's, it, it, it comes home uh, year after year uh, as, well, let's go <laughs> on to another point. No, no, that's a beautiful point. Uh, uh, and, and I think you were there on a causeway. Yes. So why do we even bother to have causeways for women from the United States to go in a, in experience. Um, what what does it do? What, I know it's, it's, it's living different. out our mission statement. It is because we are bringing together racially different women, mm -hmm. and so each causeway was intentionally uh, structured so that women of all races uh, were invited to become a part of it. Certainly, uh, being the church, they the economics was not the only reason for going was that women wanted to extend a hand of understanding. Mm -hmm. And so that, again, were groups that had different uh, cultural uh, 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 orientations of, toward food. Uh, uh, we could eat with the chopsticks mm -hmm. and eat, with, uh, which is uh, every day and mm -hmm. for us very special. But as we, uh, uh, we were oriented toward different values, the things that we held to, but we could come together to try to learn more about mm -hmm. a different part of the world and to have it interpreted to us by women who had shared in World Day of Prayer experiences, uh, uh, of women who were reading the same uh, uh, newspapers and facing the mm -hmm. same uh, world issues. I, th I think it's another way of living out our, our mission statement commitment. We're racially different always. Our intentions are there. We certainly are culturally uh, are different. Um, and this was very marked in the Hiroshima uh, Peace uh, uh, World Day of Prayer experience. Uh, um, uh, 20 or 30 
young women from Korea uh, came. A few ladies are coming looking for peace. Uh, there are other issues. And uh, this is the group of women that many years later, we, I saw it in the Times, and the remnants of that group of women uh, who wanted the world to speak out uh, the, of abuse to women. The comfort the, women. The women from uh, 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 Korea had mm -hmm. been used, right. uh, misused during the war, and they now were outcasts. And so they came, speak on our behalf. Let us have the comfort, the mm -hmm. comfort of the knowing comfort. that you care. Right. And I think that uh, causeways were another way of finding who needs our comforts, reaching out hands to do something about it, mm -hmm. and again, uh, moving toward a world of peace and justice. Mm -hmm. And it certainly would dispel stereotypes and preconceived notions that people would have, um, where they would just, you know, disregard a whole race, a denomination, or whatever. I, I was at a causeway in Los Angeles in 1980. They called it the Urban Causeway. Mm -hmm. And we went to Watts. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. yes. And it was to look at what had happened in that area. And I never forgot that. They, they spoke about the, there, was, there were no services there. There weren't stores. There, there was nothing. And so when those riots began, it just spread, but it was it was a response to this systemic issue, which yes. was a combination of racism, economic justice, and it just spilled over. And the the youth uh, use the only tool that uh, has mm -hmm. been uh, a comfort to them, and that was destruction of properties right. of others. Right. And so here uh, again, a racially uh, uh, group composed group and economically uh, a different group because so many of the issues that the uh, devastations of cities uh, that mm -hmm. had occurred in anger uh, because had no jobs, mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, no opportunities for large number of mostly uh, racial ethnic groups bottled mm -hmm. up in ghettos and so if we can't use it we'll destroy it mm -hmm. and to walk together Mm -hmm. and to get off buses and, and and go through the streets of a city was a witness, especially when mm -hmm. this is a group of women dressed in the uh, clothing of their own society, of women mm -hmm. uh, holding hands and stopping to sing, we shall overcome. And, and it was a soothing mm -hmm. uh, act, a wave. And this goes back again how foolish are those women to be working for peace when we're gearing up for war mm -hmm. and uh, fulfillment again and again. Mm -hmm. But it's good to be foolish every now and well, then. Yeah. It's foolish enough it's to foolish. believe you can make a difference. Yeah. <laughs> and foolish enough that out of that could come our relationship to other bodies. We were so involved in the development of the United Nations mm -hmm. and we have always been present and I have, I have always uh, tried to support the, the issues that were uh, mm -hmm. on the front burner, whether it were mm -hmm. health, uh, uh, education, uh, the issues that affected us across the world in terms of aftermath of war. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just jumping ahead of the line. But uh, the um, uh, uh, destruction of the children's feet mm -hmm. as they ran across their yards and mm -hmm. so uh, removing uh, from the backyards and from the farmlands uh, mm -hmm. devastating bombs mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. it was is an expression of uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, very concrete. Mm -hmm. yet very forceful response. So mm -hmm. We will live in peace and not in war. Mm -hmm. And through the years, Church Women United it has all kinds of issues. We've had different priorities. Um, and one that you were very familiar with was the People's Platform for a Global Society that invited women across the country to talk about what issues they had. And do you want to share a little bit more about that? Yes, and this was... Uh, an, an invitation, not necessarily of a group, but of uh, individuals, but hopefully uh, 
uh, individuals would come together and create a platform for peace. What are the things that we stand for and stand mm -hmm. for? Uh, the health issues that were uh, critical uh, across America, rising cost of health, thousands of people without health resources or uh, mm -hmm. funds. And so uh, this uh, is a growing issue as we expand, mm -hmm. we become more urban, uh, our air is so polluted that we cannot <laughs> breathe, the, our waters and our lakes uh, mm -hmm. are damaged by the, uh, uh, um, I, there's a big word I'd like to think of, uh, <laughs> but I can't, it means that, all, that the streams, the rivers, the, the lakes uh, are used to dump the waste uh, the creation of plastics mm -hmm. and, and, and most of the things that we need now for mm -hmm. living. And so a, one town cannot solve it mm -hmm. because the river extends for miles and miles and thousands mm -hmm. and thousands. So it demands a common, extensive uh, plan mm -hmm. and implementation of that plan. And then I think because the damages of World War II was so uh, extensive and so uh, much a part of every household that um, the Church Women United grew and it was the United Church Women were part of the okay. National Council of Churches but women felt that they were strong enough to stand on their feet okay. to define their own issues okay. and often those own issues were too painful for the okay. organized structured uh, <laughs> church to, to take place. It was a dollar and cents in many ways, places. And I believe it was Cynthia Wardell mm -hmm. of the Episcopal Church that carried the banner for that. And certainly it uh, gave Church Women United mm -hmm. an opportunity to define and carry through their mm -hmm. own goals and objectives. And in changing the name, making it Church Women United makes United a verb. I, I just really feel that. It's like you're you're not just a group, but truly a movement that takes shape mm -hmm. in many different ways. And now what we see happening in the 21st century is that younger women are getting involved through social media, through Facebook, through catching up with some of our social justice issues, not necessarily to come to meetings. And would you just share uh, at the Northeast Regional Assembly, um, you met two young women and what, do you remember what you told them to do? Well, all young women, but you had one phrase, and I never forgot it, um, about grabbing the mic. Oh, yes. And uh, I, I, that's a, a badge of mine, mm -hmm. uh, that if there's a concern, if there's an issue, if there's a need, uh, and there's no response being made, you have a responsibility. So you go up and grab the mic. <laughs> Speak out. Mm -hmm. sensitize another group and you may not hold the mic very long mm -hmm. but long enough to arouse concern and, and, and the many times that I've been brave enough to grab the mic in intense situation I suddenly discovered there were so many more people surrounding me that wanted to grab, his, grab the mic as well mm -hmm. and so rather than suffer and have nothing happen, and many other people affected negatively. If you speak out on an issue of justice, on an issue of love for children, on an issue of respect for mm -hmm. aged and the disabled, the, the farm workers that come to sleep in chicken coops as they harvest our grain and harvest our, our fruits and vegetables, if you speak out, you empower others to join you. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, you can speak without a million dollar budget. Mm -hmm. You can speak by writing a letter. Mm -hmm. You can speak by saying to a group of people, I'm here asking you to do the things that will create a climate mm -hmm. for peace. And uh, oh yes, I'm, I'm known as the old lady who grabs the mic. <laughs> but you empower younger women to do that, you know, by, yes. by giving them the freedom that they can own that same truth. That's true. Yeah. And, and you don't feel so helpless. When you do nothing, 
you feel helpless mm-hmm. and you are helpless. Mm-hmm. And you, by taking the mic and making your point of view mm-hmm. known to the group and almost providing an action statement in any case, mm-hmm. it means that you were beginning to turn a negative response into a more wholesome positive. And mm-hmm. when you are involved in problem solving and solution orientation, mm-hmm. it's a greater power. Mm-hmm greater power. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, I left this in the 50s. But <laughs> we can move along to the 60s and 70s. Uh, well, what, I, what do you, you know, remember? I just want to say again, every time I go to Washington and I can sleep anywhere I want to and I can call whether it's comfort suites or whether it's go, but it's there and I have choices. Mm-hmm. We think of the days in the early 50s when there were the majority of the places in America would not accept mm-hmm. a culturally different group. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the uh, times when uh, the women wanted to meet in our world's capital, our nation's capital, uh, there's this um, uh, story of Senator Wardell deciding to come and to take a room in the one hotel that would permit uh, the racial ethnic persons in the group to, mm-hmm. to uh, and uh, the president, I hope I can remember name, came down and met with us in that hotel, uh, standing beside, showing strength. Mm-hmm. And you uh, again, uh, we have examples of individuals uh, um, in the black community, it was Mary McLeod Bethune, who was a handmaiden of Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt. Mm-hmm. And uh, the two was, uh, would frequently appear at uh, groups together uh, as, a, again, mm-hmm. a visual witness and as a constructive force helping us to move within the United Nations structure, uh, to move in the cities mm-hmm. where uh, the torchlights and burning of uh, racial ethnic communities was simply evoking more destruction, solving mm-hmm. nothing. But uh, that witness, the, the force uh, mm-hmm. that um, women of power could give to all of us mm-hmm. by our presence was used in, in, in the uh, uh, 70s, mm-hmm. uh, in the 50s, 60s, and early 70s, over and over again, I um, by the uh, 60s, the Church of the United Way began to organize mm-hmm. uh, action-oriented experiences uh, to address the issue of race, mm-hmm. and it it was again uh, verbal orientation, the reassignment, race. Um, intended to have individuals in every unit Mm -hmm. uh, create uh, action Mm -hmm. experiences that they would take out. For example, housing discrimination has always been Mm -hmm. uh, such an issue in our community and in Mm -hmm. our world. And many, many houses were being built, but Mm -hmm. this was the aftermath of war. But the majority were close to racial ethnic people. Mm-hmm. And so you would have the twins go, a black and a white. <laughs> and uh, one would stay outside. The white uh, companion would go in and uh, you'll have uh, the ad advertising, uh, rent, home available. And immediately the person at the desk would take information, it's available, and you had the documentation that. Uh, mm-hmm. if this was a choice for you to have. She would go out, uh, a black woman would come in, and uh, we visibly, um, there are many shades of black, but this is black or dark enough to know that there was a shade <laughs> different, and um, would ask for the information mm-hmm. about the same uh, housing unit, and the word was that we are filled, uh, give us your name, but you know that it was put in the round file and nothing would, would happen. Mm-hmm. And so then the two women would go in together. Mm-hmm. And the uh, uh, this was the beginning basis 
for a legal action. Mm -hmm. So there were many planned experiences uh, during the reassignment race era that involved action that people could take that created mm -hmm. an expanding opportunity for churches mm -hmm. to become involved, for college groups to come involved. And um, uh, uh, this is the, uh, the movement that kept us going. And mm -hmm. um, we were speaking just yesterday of the, how the uh, challenges of the world affected college students. And in one of the uh, uh, most uh, devastating acts on a college campus uh, in uh, Kent, Ohio, and the death of uh, the, the crisis moment mm -hmm. that took life, that again mm -hmm. let us know mm -hmm. that we were moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And you know, we were educating women. Um, we made women in the northwest of our nation aware of the uh, installations for bombs. We actually visited as a part of many of our causeways. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, desolate areas where the bombs were stored deep mm -hmm. below the surface and uh, we were immediately told to remove that we were on uh, government property. But on site, grabbing the mic, challenging walks together, all acts of, of problem solution. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. rather than a, a discussion that they have nowhere. But you know, I can remember reading about units that were definitely segregated. There would be They would be celebrating World Day of Prayer, but there would be one in the black church and one in the white church, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't come together. And I heard a story about, it was actually Richmond, Virginia, where they wanted to do something together and some of the women said well if the black people come no one will come and i think you've heard this story the lady in charge found marion anderson the yes. opera singer had her come and two thousand people came so that's the kind of thing that women can do coretta scott king was on our board i'm sure you remember that and so many people but i think there's still this issue within the movement of Racism, you know, yes. we, we, we still see it happening in, in subtle ways. And what do you think we can do today? I, well, grab the mic, I know that, but, well, but the we mic, have to keep talking. Grab the mic so you can do. Well, just <laughs> hold the mic and just say, it. see, we learn how to hate. Mm -hmm. You're not born. Right. And so you must have opportunities for desegregating. Mm -hmm. a community and at doing it with common experiences uh, the simple act of, of listening to a great singer that is known around the world makes it easier for a local mm -hmm. group to sponsor a children's choir mm -hmm. uh, to have an interracial quartet mm -hmm. at a service uh, we have done it with, with um, Marion uh, nothing, that which we thought would happen did not. Mm -hmm. It brought together, and so it's helping desensitizing the girls, having experiences that reinforce positive values, and it's a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. you know, it given a moment of truth that we stand, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just overwhelmed at the, the um, as I reflect, uh, the number of occasions that are created by church women to run, respond to hurt, mm -hmm. um, going into the prisons mm -hmm. to see another group that in our society. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and again, this is uh, w working for peace. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and I uh, can think of uh, the response in some of the prisons, the uh, superintendent would proudly describe the programs available for men while they were incarcerated <laughs> and the uh, uh, positive Nothing living quarters that the men were having. 
and they you, they can go to the library. They can get their degrees mm -hmm. right here. They can. And you say, and what do you have for women? Maybe a few books and magazines. Mm -hmm. I did to see inequities. Mm -hmm. And then the mere, mere fact that we are concerned about it mm -hmm. stimulates persons who are in positions of power that need votes mm -hmm. to begin to react and to consider. And so um, this thread, and often we start a, um, uh, with a causeway experience mm -hmm. and it continues to grow and, and it's almost like the sweet potato vine that just grabs, <laughs> grabs the soil and starts a, a, another plant. Um, so the, uh, and, and we did a lot of work, as I said, in the 50s and 60s on assignment race, mm -hmm. only to realize at the end of the 70s that the sharp eyes and heads of mm -hmm. uh, segregation were hidden in so many of our mm -hmm. homes, in so many of our schools, and so we started again to focus on race and mm -hmm. use the title this time, reassignment, saying mm -hmm. the task is never finished. It's always mm -hmm. a moment for uh, starting again. I um, remember the um, opportunities that we had in a number of the uh, causeways. We were fortunate enough to uh, be a part of many, and um, the uh, contacts that we were able to make with the women of Russia mm -hmm. and enable them to go to uh, the leaders of the churches in mm -hmm. Russia mm -hmm. and ask for a strong uh, uh, that women be strengthened in their church groups mm -hmm. and would have an opportunity for participation. And uh, that was heartwarming mm -hmm. uh, that because you're holding your sister's hand, the mm -hmm. two of you could walk together mm -hmm. in peace in your own land. And to open that door of spiritual mm -hmm. freedom uh, was a marvelous moment of satisfaction and the friendships that continued Mm -hmm. across the years and uh, I, uh, I'm trying to remember the country but um, for many years a young woman artist had heard me speak on peace and each Christmas she would send me a uh, painting mm -hmm. that she uh, that had a peace theme and I had them in a border around my dining room <laughs> for many many years until we had a flash electrical, and that was probably the most painful destruction. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost many other things that were very pricey, but I can still see mm -hmm. the lovely figures, the symbols of peace. It's now in my heart and not on the wall. Right, right. Yeah, but you'll always have those in your heart. Yes. Yeah. It's ongoing, and I tell the story. And if they had not been destroyed, I would not telling the story That's true. and continuing to work for peace. So right. out of despair, I think we've got to look right. for positive <laughs> fruits. Of I want to go back to the prison work a little bit because I'm involved in prison ministry. Yes. And I think across the country, there are a lot of units that do a lot of work in prisons. And universally, they say the same thing. There are opportunities for men that are just not there for women. But you can make a difference. It, it's mm -hmm. hard to get into the jail. You have mm -hmm. to be quarried. You have to go through a lot of hoops. But once you're in there, that's probably the most rewarding ministry there is because, you know what, all you have to do is show up because the women there aren't looking for theology. They're just mm -hmm. looking for somebody mm -hmm. that would be there for them. To know that they're not discarded. Right. Like, right. Um, and that God um, loves them. As they are, and you I'm know, a just personal value, and right to make the trip shows that you care, right? And uh, it gives you hope of what's happening into the wider world. And they, uh, in some, some of the groups that I've come in prison, uh, we've taken the children mm -hmm. and preparing the children for the experience. And 
trying to ask that they not see their mothers behind the bars, but mm -hmm. that the space could be secured. Right. And that the mother said, I haven't hugged my baby in years. And mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, both parties needed the children mm -hmm. for hope and reassurance of love mm -hmm. and commitment. And mm -hmm. that the parent, the mother, uh, given a chance to continue mm -hmm. the nurturing that is denied you know, our unit did a book club in the prison, and I had advertised um, in our newsletter who would like to help, and one of the responses that I got was a woman saying, do you have to be a Christian to do this? Um, she didn't consider herself yeah. a Christian, but she was a uh, writer, a journalism teacher, and went in and did a wonderful job. So I think that Church Women United can reach out beyond. We can work with people who share our values, you know, and I think that's what's happening in the 21st century is we're kind of getting out of the box of church. Yes, church and, is everywhere. A church is everywhere. Uh, God is yeah, everywhere. The, so the, the opportunity to widen church mm -hmm. with the electronics and so mm -hmm. the which means that we have the potential of reaching any group. We do everywhere, we do. and with that comes the hope. That war can, that can become, as the old mm -hmm. Negro spiritual say, says, the moment when we don't have to study war no more. Right. <laughs> we really are to move, can move to the place that right. with the technology we can say to people across the world in many countries, um, you, you can work for mm -hmm. peace. Uh, you, uh, and I can't. Stop without mentioning the Peace Ribbon. The Peace Ribbon, right? Which was one grandmother, uh, I believe in north no, western part of the state of, of North Carolina, who wanted to uh, make a response to her grandchild and, and to send to her with her own hands made on a ribbon that which she would not have destroyed by I war. Know. And she wrote the specifications down, and the people began to pass them around. And the Church Women United organized the the Peace Ribbon uh, mm -hmm. movement. And so uh, I think there was a yard, a half yard, uh, uh, Muslim, preferably unreached Muslim. And on that, in any way, using any medium, you would put the things that you would have. And we had hoped, and I think we did it with tongue and cheek, but we all, always are saying things that are bigger than anybody thinks that we can do, and then we surprise ourselves by doing it. Uh, on the uh, peace day, we would we would tie up the Pentagon, walking from the Washington Monument. It might have been the other way around, but this group of individuals holding their peace ribbons, touch, one touching the other, down the streets of Washington, up as far as the human eye could see. And then so many that we did not have space, we could have gone the second time. And then taking these ribbons and sending them across the world to be hung in spaces where people gathered, where they too could be reminded of the need mm -hmm. for peace and justice. Mm -hmm. And simple acts that release powerful urges and energy mm -hmm. that really makes that little meeting mm -hmm. December 7th, 1941, an amazing time of change. Mm -hmm. That that was an amazing, oh. and we have pictures of that, visuals that are incredible. Of And it was all ages of women yes. and some men too that, and they tied, there were ribbons at the end of the yard piece of fabric, so they t literally tied them together right. to create this. And there were scenes, pastoral scenes, scenes of an infant, scenes of a family tied together, scenes of, of um, lovely spots in the world that, that inspired people to try to symbolize uh, peace and what it would mean. Uh, sometimes we ought to look at the slides of that again. <laughs> So we, we can should. be uh, 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 inspired mm -hmm. uh, by the the 
powerful forces that were released mm -hmm. when we asked people, what would you do mm -hmm. to create a world where there's no more terror? Mm -hmm. It keeps challenging every day. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, again, making a decision that we won't go to war, but we will participate mm -hmm. in trying to make one spot in the world a bit safer for its inhabitants. Mm -hmm. And you're holding a book that is the uh, it documents Churchwoman United from its beginning, from 1941 oh, to yes. 1978, and the title is just because. Do you want to explain the title? Margaret Shannon wrote it and all the things that needed to be done and her response, you know, when people said, why do we need to do them? I think it's right in there. The uh, Margaret Shannon was the uh, reincarnation of all that Church of United has become because she was certainly one of the powerful forces to make it a worldwide movement. And um, uh, when she was engaged in conversation, uh, why would women take such a risk? What is the need of bringing together a, a peace ribbon? Why would women uh, try to visit bombed out city, uh, urban terror spots? Why do, What's the value? Can you, uh, you know, can this be quantified in terms of dollars and cents? And why are you doing it? And uh, she ends, I think, the um, uh, preface to this book by saying, just because, why? Uh, why not? Mm -hmm. You can answer it in either way. And it's, it's, take any of our challenges that we have tried, and we as just as well spend our time at World Community today <laughs> trying to communicate successful battles and battles, quote, on terms that we have engaged in and, and issues that have been resolved. Just as well, on a Human Rights Day, celebrate someone that does mm -hmm. risk life in order that uh, others mm -hmm. can be uh, that can give, and uh, why not uh, try to find a way of embracing the, the women of Hiroshima, the comfort women of Korea and World War II? Why not uh, send shoes to infants across the world? Why not uh, take up the bombs that we have seeded in villages where thousands of children have nub, nubs and not peace? Why not uh, try to overcome and to plant trees that we can breathe and have an opportunity for adequate nutritious food. Why not spend hours in meditation or walk in a labyrinth in order that we can for a moment to look at ourselves and look at others. And so when anyone says, why are you doing it? Just because. Thank you, Thelma.